I'm Dr. Kristen Finn from Canine Rehabilitation and Integrative Veterinary Center. And today we have with us Scout. She is two and a half weeks post-op TPLO. And we're gonna go over some of the massage techniques that, and passive range of motion techniques that um, can be used to increase her range of motion, help encourage her weight bearing, and improve the tone of her muscles. So every single dog seems to be very comfortable when you're massaging their atlas and their pole up by their head. Just gentle, open-handed, rubbing around. And the dog will always tell you if you're on the right track. This dog is certainly had a lot of work from us, but she's wagging her tail. Scout, sit. Sit down, sweetheart. Yes. And she's very tight in her thoracic inlet, which is this region in front of her shoulder blades. So like almost all dogs that have um, an injury to their hind limb or a weakness in their hind limb, she plants her front leg feet on the ground and then pulls herself up, creating tremendous strain on her neck and shoulders, which are not meant to be pulling her body up. So we did a lot of work on her before her surgery. We would call that prehab to get her body in good shape. Okay, now we'll get to the ground, sweetheart. Come on, Scout, Scout, sit. Scout. Yes, and we'll lay down, perfect. And then we'll continue on her body. Her fascia, which is the layer that covers the muscles, is very tight. It's almost like she's been shrink wrapped over her shoulders. So I'm gonna really work on this area. This would be referred to as skin mobilization. Sometimes we bunch it up and um, then you gotta move into skin rolling. If an animal seems sensitive to your work um, or the skin is twitching, it makes you just need to lighten up. That is too much pressure and the tissue is too tight. Good girl. We'll just pivot around. Not everybody can sit like this, and that's fine. You can have her on the couch or the bed. Whatever makes you comfortable, because if you're not comfortable, it will be very evident to the dog, and you won't be able to do a good job, and you won't be relaxed, and you'll hate it. So and so we want a win-win for everybody. Just getting some mobility into her spine. She's very tight in her spine because when they have surgery, or an injury, they use their spine and spinal muscles to kind of pivot their weight and support um, the weight of the hind, take the weight off the hind limb and kind of create a little spasm in their back. So it doesn't matter if she had a beautiful surgery on her leg, which she did have a really good surgery. You can hardly even see her sutures, her suture line, her sutures are already um, healed. So we really want to address the spine always. And I think that that's often part of the reason that they injure the opposite leg is because they've thrown their body out of, out of whack, so to speak. So we're just waking our way down her body. If you're in a hurry, don't do this. Only do it if you have enough time to take your time and relax the dog. It can never be about an agenda for us. Okay. There you go, sweetheart. She's shaved because she just had surgery. So I'm just massaging around her hip and I'm gonna use gentle pressure to straighten her leg while I'm rubbing and relaxing the tissues. You never want to pull. I'm not going to pull on her legs or pull her here. Just gently push at the, over the stifle or the knee where she had surgery. I'm kind of cupping it there and rubbing her hip because these hip flexors get very tight when she's trying to keep the leg close to her because it's injured. 
We did a stance analyzer on her a few minutes ago, and though she's walking around and placing her limb on the ground, um, she's only bearing 3% of her body weight on this leg. So um, that puts a lot of extra pressure on the opposite leg and on her front legs. So even though she's moving around, she still has a lot of discomfort. Fortunately, her mom is icing her knee several times a day for inflammation. There you go. And you can see she's just kind of relaxing as we're massaging this and just putting gentle pressure. Good girl. So we're, our goal right here is to have her leg be extended out. And I'm just going to slightly shift it. Good girl. And I'm stroking up and down her hamstrings and her adductor muscles, the muscles that um, bring the leg close to the body, and these honorary quadriceps as well. So just gently rub things that seem like they may, may be tight. Take um, stock of which things she really responds well to. She's gonna tilting her head. There you go, friend. And relaxing into my body. And so I'm just going to gently push on the tarsus or the hock um, to end, and lend to the straightness of the leg or the extension through these tendons. And then I'm going to bring my hand down to her foot, still supporting her knee, and gently flex everything up. Take a deep breath and then slide my hand back. So then we'll extend it again. Again, gently pushing, going really slowly. There's no amount of reps that you want to do. I um, respectfully disagree with bicycle movement. Dogs don't ride bicycles at all. Their gait is nothing like riding a bicycle. So extension and then pushing up into flexion and very gentle. I'm not trying to get a certain degree. I'm just going so there's a slight, subtle resistance and then, oh good girl. And she's not tensing against me at all. So that means I'm not making her uncomfortable. So then we'll kind of get the leg fairly straight and pendulum forward, keeping in the same plane of the body. So we're not lifting it up and we're not twisting it. There you go, she's stretching all these hamstrings. So after penduluming forward, you're gonna pendulum back, not to the same degree, and I'm cradling the knee so there's no torque, and if for some reason she pivoted or moved, you wouldn't be creating strain on her newly operated um, cycle or knee. Again, rubbing the hip as I'm just gently guiding and there we go, and that is pretty good. And then bringing it back, so we're just trying to create motion in the joints, and she's just kind of volunteering. You know, her hip is fraying up. She had a lot of muscle spasms along here, and she had muscle twitching in her um, gastroc muscle. So she's volunteering this kind of movement, and then I will just kind of guide her. Well, okay, let's get even a little straighter. There you go, sweetheart. So we don't want to forget the forelimbs, especially as we already said, she uses them to pull herself up. So we're just going to do the right forelimb. And what you would do is you'd have her turn over to do the, um, sorry, where you do the left forelimb, you'd have her turn over to do the right side, but just straightening the limb. And I'm just going down to the carpus and then pushing up. So we get flexion of the carpus, which is like her wrist, her elbow, so the bone is parallel to the spine, and her shoulder, a little squeeze up, then straighten, then we'll pendulum forward, and as you can see, she's very comfortable with this. We already freed up her body, um, the fascia up here. So this is what you want your dog to look like after you're done working on them. If you're not getting it, like I said, just lighten up, and the dog is always right. So use your dog as a guide and you'll do well.